In Photoshop, there's so many ways to remove an object from its background in a photo, like this photo I have here. For example, we want to remove this guy from this background and put him onto another background, like this. And in order to do this can be quite a task, but I'm going to show you here how to use the Extract Filter. And in my opinion, I think it's got to be the fastest and easiest way to do this. There are other ways to do it. There are plenty of other ways. Photoshop, there's no shortage of ways to do this. But this is probably the fastest and easiest way to do it. So we're going to start first with an easier to mask image, or easier to extract image, I should say, which is this church here. All right, so the first thing to do, the first thing I'm going to do, and I always do it pretty much when I open up any Photoshop document, is duplicate your layer. Now we can do that by hitting Command or Control, if you're on a PC, J. Okay, I'm going to move the layers palette out of the way for the time being. All right, now come up here to Filter and go down to the Extract option. Okay, this is the Extract dialog box. And the way Extract works is you use that, your highlighter here, this tool right up here, to highlight the edges of the object you want to extract, and then you use the paint bucket to fill in the area that you want to, to keep. And you can use the eraser to touch up your edges. For example, if I make a big scribble up here that I didn't want, you can take your eraser and you can erase it all. Okay, so let's get to work extracting this photo. All right, start in one area and just drag right along the edge that you want to extract. All right, we want to take the church out, so we're going right along the edge of the church, just like this. All right, drag right along it. And then up here for the cross, just cover the entire thing. Come down the other side. And come right in like this. And right down the side of the roof. And that is a bit rough, as you can see. So we're going to straighten that out. And we're going to hit E. That's going to give us the eraser. We're going to touch up these edges where we have a little bit of sloppiness. Just like that. And now what we're going to do is grab the paint bucket tool. And now let me say that when you click this, you get this blue fill. But if your entire image fills with blue, it means you have a hole in your line in this highlight. So I want to save the church, so I'm going to fill above that. Now, if the entire image is filled, it would mean that there's a hole somewhere in this line. You don't have to paint your highlight in along the edges. That automatically is an edge. All right, and we can hit preview here to see what we've got. You can see it's a bit rough, a bit rough on some of the edges, but we'll take care of that. So hit OK, and we have our extracted version right here. I want to zoom in on the steeple, and you can see it's a bit, it's a bit rough. So bring in the Layers palette and hit Command or Control J to duplicate this layer, and it's going to start filling in these semi-transparent areas, okay? So I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate it a bunch of times, okay, just to get us a good start. Now select the bottom layer, and this is if you're in Photoshop, CS2. Hold down the Shift key and click the top layer, and hit Command or Control E to merge them all, or just click on the top layer if you're in Photoshop, CS, and just hit Command or Control E, and that merges down. And just keep clicking until you get all the way to the bottom uh, layer there. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way, and you can see we still have some rough edges. We're missing some things around the church. So what we're going to use is the history brush, and that's right over here, the history brush. Hotkey is Y. Make sure it's the history brush, not the art history brush. Now, in CS, I believe it's right over here with the healing brushes, but in CS2, it's its own little thing. So what you have to do with the history brush is get the history palette, and you can see we have all these layer via copies, and I want this little thing here is your art history brush. That's setting your brush state. We're going to set our brush state to be image size. And what the brush is going to do is paint back to what the image looked like back at image size. Okay? So you can see we're getting our edge back. And if we wanted, we could get the sky back, but we don't want the sky. Alright, so we're going to quickly go over this. I'm going to touch up those edges in just a second. But for now, I'm just going to go over this very quickly for the sake of showing you, and then you can grab, whoops, your eraser tool, and just quickly hit these edges to clean them up, wherever you accidentally painted too much in, or you can just hit undo when you do actually paint too much in, and there's actually supposed to be more here, okay, and let's come right up to here, and zip right down, zip that edge, and that edge, we're going to clean that up. And we're just going to clean this up right around here. All right. And now to replace the background, we simply grab the image of clouds, which I have right here. Hit V, it's your move tool right over here. And grab it and just drag and drop it right into that document. 
Okay, and adjust it so we can't see the horizon. Okay, just like that. And then bring your Layers palette in and drag it right below the layer of the church. And there you go. We've extracted the church and put that nice sky behind it. But that's a pretty easy extraction. We want to do a more difficult extraction, something that you're really going to want to use extraction for. For the church, you could get away with using any number of tools. But something like this where you got this hair blowing in the wind, you're going to want to use extraction and maybe or maybe channels. Um, but we're going to use extraction because it's a bit faster, and that's what I'm doing the tutorial on. So grab the layers palette, duplicate that layer once again. We're working on layer one. Go into the extract. All right, and we're going to grab a brush size. You can adjust your brush size. You can make it huge if you want. We're just going to set it to about 12. I'm just going to dial that right in. And we're just going to start going around this guy. Just come right up. This leg around the laptop. And I'm going to zip right up and around the laptop here. And we're going to quickly trace around him. Now you don't you can stop. You don't have to keep it one continuous motion, even though it may look like I am. Uh you don't have to worry about doing that. As long as you have one solid line, it will work. Come right down around his back. Alright. And there we go. So come over here, grab the paint bucket tool. We want to save the guy, so we're gonna fill him with blue, although I forgot something here. Grab the highlighter once more. We got to get this bit of sky out. But we're gonna we're gonna use a tool here in the extract palette called Smart Highlighting. Now, when you grab your brush, you're gonna see the Smart Highlighter comes up. It's almost got like a little crosshair in it. And when you start using it, you're gonna see that crosshair follows your edge. And the way Smart Highlighting works is it follows high contrast edges when there's a lot of color difference, like the chin and the sky. It can easily follow that because it can tell. Okay, I. I can see you want to definitely extract the sky from his chin. So it will follow that, and it's good for high contrast areas. So once again, grab that paint bucket, and you can see we're getting rid of the sky too. Hit preview, and we've cut him out. Hit OK. Shut off the background layer. I just shut it off right here in the layers palette. Move the layers palette out of the way. All right, now we're going to come zoom right in here on his knee. We're going to grab that art history brush again, and we're going to set our history state to image size. Okay, it's before I did the extract. And we're going to start painting back in anything that was lost. All right. Now, so, a lot of images, you won't have too much detail loss. But these ones I'm working on uh, have a bit. So let's just fix it. All right. Go, come right up, get his wrist, his hand, his face fixed. His hair came out really well, which is really what we were doing this for. All right, and his back here. All right, and then we can just grab the eraser and get rid of any kind of artifacting or anything that appears to be coming off of these objects. Okay, right here around his elbow, we got to clean that up. And right in there, clean it. Whoa. Clean his uh, collar, and right here along his back, gotta clean that up as well. And I'm just going through this pretty quickly. You might want to spend more time doing it yourself. And right in here under his hands, you can see these little bits of blue. Just clean those out. All right, zoom back out, and we can get rid of the background layer now. Whoa! Just double click on the background layer and garbage it and now what we're going to do is we're gonna bring this background in here which I have and I'm gonna hold shift so it drops it right into the middle of my document and it didn't quite work there but shift drops it into the middle of your document you can see it's right here Let me just adjust it here <laughs> with my keyboard and grab that entire backy, la uh, backy group and drag it beneath the image. You can see, there we go. And now grab the guy and just adjust him as you wish. Just like that. And you can see, just using extract there, you can very quickly get pretty complex images like this, cut out of pretty complicated backgrounds, and uh, 
put onto new backgrounds. Now let me quickly add that in both of my images I dropped the background into the image I'd extracted and that is again because I used a history brush and we want to be able to go back in now, say we look at him, we say, okay, right here on his sleeve, that needs to be touched up a little. So then we can grab the history brush and we can still go in and touch it up, which is not working correctly because we moved him. All right, so you want to make sure you do that before you move him. Let me go back here before I moved him. And whoops. There we go. <laughs> and right here. Now... Let me make sure I've got my history state set correctly. There we go. Make sure you have the correct layer selected. It's not going to let you do it if you have a group selected. And come right in here with the history brush and just correct anything you need to correct. Right here where his shirt's missing. And anything you see like that that needs to be corrected, you can then correct once the background's on it. You can see we need to clean this up a little up here. But all of that can be done later on now that you have the image into the background. And that's it. We've extracted that image and the simpler image of the church. But really, extraction is one of the easiest and fastest ways for what you get. It's one of the best. And uh, that's it. You've learned how to extract and how to make extract the filter work for you. Hope you've learned something from it. And uh, check out tutvid.com, the site that these tutorials are from. And I hope you find other stuff there that you like. And thanks for watching.